My name is Paul Corkum. I'm from Ottawa, Canada. I work at National Research Council of Canada and the University of Ottawa. We have a joint lab. Well, the University of Ottawa has decided to emphasize photonics. And so over a period of about 15 years, they've built from very few people working in it to, I think, 20, 21 professors by now. So it's become quite large. Uh, Bob Boyd has moved to Ottawa. And uh, so with Bob Boyd in Ottawa, Pierre Brini, myself, a number of people who are doing uh, forefront things in photonics. We have joined a Max, or we have launched a Max Planck Center in Ottawa. The Max Planck Center is called the Max Planck Center for Extreme and Quantum Photonics. And there's always a link with the German Max Planck Center. So in this case, it's with the center in Erlangen and the center at Garking, MPQ, and the Max Planck Center for the Science of Light is what it's called in Erlangen. I guess the uh, title in Ottawa gives you a feeling for what it is, extreme and quantum photonics. I guess quantum photonics is extreme photonics too, so maybe extreme photonics captures the essence of it. There's many people involved. I mentioned only three earlier. So there's quite a bit of work in nanophotonics, extreme because it's nano. I work in attosecond pulse generation, attosecond science, and making soft x-ray beams from, higher, from lasers. And so it's extreme in wavelength and pulse duration. When intense light interacts with atoms, molecules, or solids, at least a large some class of solids, it does something that sort of we didn't think too much about uh, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. That is, it tends to pull an electron off, but because the light is intense, the light, you know, the electron bobs like a cork on a water wave. It goes out and it comes back and it collides with the atom from which it left. And when it collides, it has a chance of recombining, giving off radiation. So first, the radiation has all the energy the electron has gained through this process. And that can be a lot. It can be way above its ionization potential of an atom and way above the photon energy that drove it. So it makes short wavelength light. Um, it also, the electron can be controlled by a laser pulse, by the laser pulse, because mostly it's out there in the continuum and a long ways away from its partner, ion or hole. And so it moves rather freely in the field and so you can control it really well. And so you can force it to recombine over a short period of time. So that can be a burst of light that's world record uh, duration. That's how we make the shortest pulses in the world and therefore make the fastest measurements that can be made in a controlled way. If you irradiate materials intensely enough, the band gap, the band gap of the material might collapse or it might change. And it would be interesting to measure that change. So I'm here because of to learn about band gap collapse, and I'm invited here to talk about high harmonics and whether that might be useful. So in that case, the process isn't an attosecond process, but the idea would be to use the strange nonlinearity on which this is based. You know, electron coming out, out into the continuum and back again is really different than nonlinear physics before it. So that's one case. Of course, a second thing, a second general category of what you might look at is very fast measurements, very fast processes. Um, you might say, what's so fast? But mostly anything to do with electrons or a lot to do with electrons are so fast because they're light, they move short distances in matter, and so they do these things very quickly. Um, they can be dephased quickly, they move around quickly, and you can ask questions about how fast things occur. That's interesting in, in solids and in molecules particularly. So speed is the second thing. And of course, if you have a laser-like X-ray or soft X-ray source, that's a possibility of having you know, X-rays from more or less a laser system. It's a nonlinear process, but it's, it's laser-based. So those are three general categories of applications. Uh, my work is to try to develop at a second light sources and to apply them. And so in that sense, I make the new light sources. Of course, underlying this is another laser source, generally a femtosecond laser 
you know, maybe pumped by another laser, pumped by another laser. That's what it is today, isn't it? And I don't make the first, the second, or the third, right? But I do try to make the attosecond uh, source, and uh, my group does, as do other people around the world. And we're, well, we're improving all the time, trying to find better ways to measure, better ways to make shorter pulses, make them more intense, make them more flexible, all of those kind of things.